built, not bought. It's a great slogan. So if that sounds like a plan to you too, then you've come to the right place. Because well, I'm Brad Danger and I have a collection of cheap cars that can be turned into supercar killers. Without further ado, let's crack straight into it. Toyota had a lot of phenomenal cars like the Chaser, the Celica GT4, and yes, the Supra. We love Supra, we love Supra, we love Supra, we love Supra. Well, I mean, they are hella expensive. Instead, get the adorable midship runabout two-seater, or if you wanna be all normal about it, call it the MR2. Oh God, the engine bay, it's evil. And yeah, guess what? It is, and it's gonna snap oversteer on you and make you wet yourself. But you know what? That's the beauty of the MR2. They are already on the edge, so you don't have to do very much. Throw on some grippy tires and maybe an exhaust, and you'll have a car that is lighter, makes better power to weight, and can make tighter turns than a Miata. The last generation, the ZZW30s, are a lot better set up and easier to drive than the more dangerous SW20, and it is basically like a budget Lotus. If you care more about winning races than showing off, you have to drive one of these cars. I bet it's gonna put a smile on your face. And since you're gonna like it so much, you might just buy one, cause they're cheap. Sadly, they are super rare. And make sure you get that five speed, trust me. So if you're ready, here's one that's just waiting to be modified and it's only 8,500 bucks. Honestly, <laughs> I might go get it, I'll be right back. And real quick, wouldn't you guys agree? These days, we all seem to be doing a bunch more online shopping. Well, today's sponsor, Honey, is something you need to be using. It is the free internet browser extension and really my online saving sidekick. And like a Honey Badger, it'll automatically scour the internet for promotional codes to give you discounts wherever you like to shop. It already works for things that you're already buying. And it's so easy to install with just two clicks and you'll be able to use it on lots of your favorite websites. And how easy is it to actually use? Well, it actually just pops up at checkout and asks you to apply coupons. It really is that simple to save money. It seriously just starts searching for coupon codes automatically and works on all types of websites. Now all you gotta do is hit accept and it'll save you money. Everything from auto parts websites, gaming websites, tech websites, literally anything. So. If you have a computer, Honey needs to be on it. Just go to joinhoney.com slash ideal media. That's joinhoney.com slash ideal media. Be sure to download it because we have it on all our computers here at Ideal. And thank you, Honey, for sponsoring today's video. Now, back to the show. Well, actually, on second thought, you might just wanna pick one up that's already modified, like this one that easily has 10K worth of mods, but it's only 5K more than the other one. Now that's ideal. Now, more Toyotas, more problems. And the biggest problem with the MR2 is, well, that uh, they suck for practicality. Like, even a Miata is more comfortable and has more storage space. So why not get a four-seater? A four-seater with a 2JZ. And in Japan, it's called the Toyota Altezza. And today, it's a hugely successful enthusiast car despite it coming from a luxury car brand. Now on paper, it is a perfect competitor for the BMW E46. They both have a straight six engine, four doors, and are rear wheel drive. In practice though, the IS300 just wasn't quite as fast or refined as the BMW. And so it kind of sailed under the radar until Drift Kids couldn't afford the 240SX anymore and needed a new platform. And what better platform to start with than a right wheel drive BMW competitor powered by the legendary 2JZ. Did I mention that before? While it's not the 2JZ GTE, it lacks some of the stronger internals, but believe it or not, the Gretti piggybacks will fit both engines. The maps and off the shelf stuff work the exact same. And because the GE has a higher compression, you can get a lot more out of it without making serious financial investments into a turbo. It's like a budget Supra, which is good because well, this list is for cheap cars that have unlimited tuning potential. And yes, I agree they are getting pretty rare, so you wanna act fast and grab one like this one with a few miles on it that I found for just under 11K. Now, if you'd rather save some money, there's another six cylinder rear drive car made by a luxury brand you should look at. Well, 
There's actually a total of three on this list, but next up is the Infinity with the G35. And I suspect some of you young guns out there already know about the Infinity G35. It's just a 350Z with back seats and a clock in the center of the dash that, if you ask me, looks pretty fancy. And it's easy as hell to find cheap parts to make them fast. I know everyone wants to turbo because they want the noise, but I actually think the best value you can get is actually from a supercharger. Like for four grand and an afternoon of work, your G35 can have over 400 horses and also remain smog legal and reasonably reliable. Plus it sounds oh so good with that supercharger whine. And being reliable is good because a lot of times cheap just means cheap to buy but you'll go bankrupt after a year of ownership. In a VQ engine, it's reliable enough that you're probably gonna be okay. So making this a cheap investment to buy and own. Right now, they're sitting at roughly around 8K. Now, V6s, they're cool and all, but what if you want eight magical cylinders? Well, you could get a Pontiac Firebird. And before you skip through this section, hear me out, because yeah, you hear the that? sounds like an LS V8, AKA one of the easiest motors to build power from really ever. And they're a lot like that low maintenance girlfriend. You don't really have to do all that much. And with the mods that you do do, you're gonna be pushing more than 500 ponies. Just a cam here, a better ignition module there, a fuel pump and some injectors and voila, highway pulls, pff, like nothing else. Now, you're not gonna be able to get the really fast Firebird, the bargain bin Corvette that is the WR6, but that's okay because you wanna do all the performance stuff yourself. This is a list of tuner cars after all. So what you do, you get a Gen 4 base V8. Those ran from like 1993 to 2002, but depending on your level of mechanical aptitude, you'll probably want a 98 or newer since they have the more modern LS engines over the older LT power plants. I'm not saying the LT is bad by any means. They are chap AF to work with. It's just that, let's just be honest, you want the LS if you are a modern driver. The one thing is that these cars are going up in value pretty quickly actually, which kind of sucks because the Firebird and that Catfish Camaro were kind of the last holdouts and used to be the absolute cheapest way to get the legendary Chevy V8. But now if you want to get on the LS train, you better act fast and use the ideal car strategies while you're at it. So here's one for a hair over 11 grand, which damn, it feels like last year you could have bought one for 5K every day. Still an amazing value. so. Go for it. Surprisingly though, a German car might actually be a better value. And it's the BMW E36, which is as cheap now as they will ever be. Why in the world would you want an E36? Because, well, they're perfectly balanced and by BMW standards are incredibly cheap to modify and upgrade, which is why you literally cannot go to a track day or drift event without seeing at least 10 of them. See, only a couple years ago, the E30 BMWs used to be the track day car of choice for track day bros. I'm talking more popular than the Miata, but all the E30s are gone now. So you move right up into an E36. You can't afford an M for this list. I mean, I can't, maybe you can. So instead, what you do is you get the 325i. You can add some good old forced induction and be pushing 400 horsepower easy. Lots of people do, but if you ask me, it's actually cheaper just to drop a newer S55 into them, which is like 200 horsepower boost depending on the trim, or just LS swap it for a ton of fun on the cheap. More likely though, you won't touch the motor. You're gonna upgrade the suspension, maybe weld the diff, and just enjoy the hell out of it with the power that it's got for like five grand. But some of the subscribers here, which if you're not subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button, you're more into all wheel drive. But a Bug Eye WRX is just way out of budget. No problem, get a Saab. A Sabaru. I can already hear your confusion, but trust me. See, Saab has done a lot of strange things, like produce a bunch of two-stroke cars and rebadge a Subaru WRX as a 9-2X. And since a lot of people didn't know that until we made this video, and you're watching it now, they used to sell this little car from a defunct Swedish brand, and they didn't sell it for WRX prices. 
The WRX is legendary for being easy to tune. Cobb ports, big turbos, unequal length headers, all widely available. All easy to bolt on a 92X to create the ultimate supercar killer sleeper. Here's one for five grand, which is like half what a WRX is worth. Just shh, don't tell anyone. Even though I just did. No one watches these videos, right? Let me know in the comments below. Would you rather have a Sabaru? or a Subaru. And I know some of you guys are kind of afraid of tasty meatballs. That's okay. Let's travel back to the land of food appropriation and American V8s with one of the longest running enthusiast lines ever. Say it with me, Mustang GT. Now, taming and tuning Mustangs is nothing new. In the 60s, Carroll Shelby was doing it. Then there was Roush and Saline, both legendary tuners in their own way. Nowadays, you have RTR making some fantastic out-of-the-box drift machines. And for you, humble viewer, that means there are millions of cheap upgrades. From bolt-on power to completely overhauled suspension setups for every generation. So, which one do you get then? Well, the Fox body used to be the answer, but most of those have already been bought and modified. Instead, the SN95's and New Edge Mustangs are starting to appreciate, although you can still get them for dirt cheap. But in my opinion, I think you should get one of the S197s. They have probably the biggest aftermarket, I mean, between BBK, Ford Roush, and Saline. You have a different supercharger for every day of the week, and they sell on eBay for like five grand. Bolt right on, and you'll be spanking coyotes for half the price. Pick one up any day for around 10 grand too, which is like pretty much the perfect price for any car with a few bolt-ons will run tens. This one I found needs a little bit of work, which is great because that's what the plan was anyway. And it's less than seven grand. But out of all these cars, there's one I'd recommend to new enthusiasts over all the rest. The perfect platform for learning how to mod cars and understand tuning. It is the Honda, not a Civic. The Civic? spelled forward or backwards, is just way too overdone. Don't get me wrong, it's such a good choice for learning to work on and drive, but it's just, ugh, there's way too many of them. So instead, get a CRX or a Del Sol. Under the hood, they look the same as the Civic you all want. The CRX is just a shorter, lighter weight Civic. The Del Sol is just a convertible two-seater Civic. Both have variations of the infinitely tunable B-series motors. And in true Honda fashion, they go together like Legos. Swap in a K-Series motor or turbo B16 or find a B18B, whatever you want. Then get Type R parts that bolt right on and are cheap as hell. And suddenly your $4,000 commuter can hang with any of the cars on this list. Oh, and before you at me about how evil and bad front wheel drive is, actually go drive one around instead of just screeching because of the you heard on the internet. Then get back to me. Here's a CRX for like, nothing. Go buy one. And did you like this list? Let me know in the comments below. Which one would you own or have you owned? How many of you had a 90s Honda as your first car person car? As always, you guys sharing these videos with your friends that haven't seen them yet helps this channel a ton. And also subscribing, turning on that notification bell. Well, do it! Because we make awesome car content for you pretty much every single day. I'm Brad Danger. This is Ideal Cars and say it with me. Keep living the ideal lifestyle.